Several other science fashioning processes have since been developed. One is called polymerization. It simply takes similar type molecules that are too small for gasoline, such as these gas molecules, unites them by the polymerization process to form a larger molecule, a gasoline molecule of exceptionally high anti-knock value. Thus, science again fashions for us more and better products. By a somewhat different process, this alkylation unit joins together two very small molecules to make another high-octane gasoline component. And this reforming unit takes low-grade gasoline found in crude oil and changes it to high-grade gasoline. In many of these processes, and in the latest cracking process, the science fashioning is accomplished by a catalyst, a material that promotes reactions of other substances. The most modern cracking process uses a catalyst in the form of a fine powder that will flow like a fluid. Here is what happens inside a fluid catalytic cracker. Gas oil is heated. It is joined by the hot, finely powdered catalyst shown here as little white grains. The hot oil and the still hotter catalyst then move together through pipes up into a chamber called the reactor and are tumbled about. Here, the heavy oil molecules are cracked by catalytic action to produce gasoline molecules. These move out at the top. As the catalyst becomes covered with coke, it becomes less active and is drawn off at the bottom. Air blows it through a pipe to the regenerator where the coke is burned off. This reheats the catalyst, which again joins the flow of incoming oil. Here's the entire operation showing the complete cycle. Notice that the same catalyst is used over and over in this modern method of gasoline manufacturing. It takes a complicated unit to do the job. Every two minutes, a whole carload of catalysts passes through the line. 16 stories high, each of these big cat crackers can produce enough gasoline in one day to last the average motorist 1,000 years. Contrast the modern unit you've just seen with this historic Burton cracking still at Whiting, Indiana, the first successful commercial cracking unit. Though the amount of oil in today's catalytic cracking units is actually less than in the old Burton unit, the catalyst cracks the gas oil more than 7,000 times faster and so permits much greater throughput. It is one more demonstration of serving through science. The average driver may not know a cat cracker from a firecracker, but he wants top performance when he starts the engine. The right volatility allows the engine to warm up without coughing or sputtering. But starting and warm up are not the whole story. In all seasons, the driver wants quick acceleration and a lot of other things. He wants full power on the highway. He wants long mileage and economy. And all of these things call for a scientific balance of gasoline components. You know how easy it is to ignite gas, which is made up of small molecules. Here's a mixture of liquid hydrocarbon, so light and volatile that the heat of a hand will make it boil. It's flammable and so volatile it ignites fast. Now, here are some of the heavier, less volatile hydrocarbons. The lighted taper does not ignite them. Yet, when vaporized and burned in an engine, they pack a lot of power and give mileage. To make a gasoline blend that will have a proper combination of volatility characteristics, first we put in the very light hydrocarbons for quick starting. The next heavier ones have rapid warm-up. Then some that give instant live power acceleration. And a final portion for full power and good mileage out on the highway. 
The blended gasoline has the desired range of performance with economy because it contains just the right groups of hydrocarbon molecules. One for instant starting, but so active that in the summer it should be used only in moderation. One for rapid warm-up. One for smooth acceleration. And one for full power and good mileage. Molecules that work together. A harmonious team. In the engine laboratory, by means of a glass intake manifold, you can actually see one of the volatility differences between fuels. Slowing down the action, here's what too low volatility causes. A wet manifold and imperfect distribution. These liquid droplets decrease engine performance, waste mileage, and dilute the crankcase oil. By switching to a fuel with correct volatility, vaporization is complete and there is no waste. Building trouble-free performance starts in the laboratory, but it doesn't stop there. Fuels are tested under all kinds of road conditions, in all types of engines, and under all the different seasonal and climatic conditions. This means city driving. It also means rolling out into the country, driving at moderate temperatures and in hot weather and in extremely cold weather. Seasonal variations and the climates of different regions must be taken into account. Volatility is adjusted to suit the season and the region in which the gasolines will be used. A distillation test measures the volatility of motor gasoline. This is the test which determines how the various components of the gasoline have been blended. But volatility is only one major requirement. What about this? Listen. Fuel knock that needs to be prevented. Let's go back to the laboratory and get this part of the story. The motorists want smooth, controlled application of power. Using a special demonstrator, I shall show the difference between poor performance and good performance. Now, with the hard face of this mallet, I strike the piston. The piston you see receives a punishing rap, showing how power is wasted when gasoline knocks. This time, I shall use the cushioned face of the mallet to show what happens when gasoline does not knock. Smooth, useful power propels the piston sends the crank spinning. The performance difference you've seen is a mighty important one that you ought to understand better. So let's look inside the engine by means of animation and see what happens when the fuel burns. 